turning potatoes into bioplastic? Really? Yes, it's real. Hello everyone, it's me Dashi Nilham and today I'm going to turn these potatoes into this bioplastic. Yo. This video is divided into two parts. Part 1, extraction of starch and part 2, turning starch into bioplastic. To know how to make bioplastic from potato, watch this full video. And don't skip. Then the intro. Here I've taken four potatoes and peeled them nicely. These are the potato peels you can see here. I'll also extract starch from potato peels cause potato peels contain good amount of starch as well. Then I measured out the peeled potatoes one by one. As you can see it's a pocket measurement scale so I cannot measure all the four potatoes at once. Anyways the total weight of the peeled potatoes is 383.7 grams. Then I measured out the net weight of potato pills and that's about 47.7 grams. And I marked the measurements like this. Now let's move on to the extraction process of starch. Starch is insoluble in water. So I'm adding water so that starch will be extracted out from potato peels in the water. Squeezing the peels in the presence of water will assist to extract starch nicely. Now I'm filtering out the peel water. This potato peel water should contain rich amount of starch. Filtering again will lift behind some peel dirt and will give you good result. After filtering the peel water, I'm gonna leave this for overnight so that all starch can precipitate at the bottom of the pot perfectly. Now it's time to grate the potatoes. Here you can see potatoes have been grated quite well. Then I'm adding water to the grated potatoes. It will pull out all the starch compound in water. So now the grated potato stuffs must be filtered off. I just need the water which contains rich amount of starch. As you can see I placed the peel water and potato water separately and marked them with their net weights. Look at the bottom of this jar. A white precipitation is formed and that is the targeted compound starch. I'm leaving all the jars like this for overnight. Next day, I decided to separate the starch from the dirty water in the jars. To do this, I've taken a dish where all the dirty water will be poured in. Then I poured the powder water into that dish. There you can see the starch precipitation is formed at the bottom, but it's in the pure state, and I gotta purify this as much as I can. Before that, I've also poured the pill water into that dish to separate the starch from it. But in the pill water bottle, I don't know why, I got nothing at all. On the other hand, after separating the pill water from the glass, I got really poor amount of starch at its bottom. I expected there would be a good amount of starch in powder pills, but it really disappointed me. Anyways, now it's time to get rid of some impurities from the starch. So I added water again to those jars. Then I decided to transfer all the starch containing water in one jar and let the starch to be precipitated again. 
Meanwhile, I also wash the glass that contains starch from powder pills. Then I apply the filtration process to get the starch out of water. Similarly, I filtered out the starch from grated powder pills. After a while, I checked the top of the filtered tissue and got satisfying result. These white stuffs are starch which had been filtered out from water, but it's quite wet. So I let it to be dried up. After some hours, I came back and saw the starch had dried up nicely. I also noticed that there were some starch dried up at the bottom of the jar, but there were some dirty stuffs too. Then I come up with an idea to get rid from the dirty stuffs. Firstly, I transferred all the starch on an aluminum foil sheet. Then I took a knife and scratched off the dirty stuffs from the starch and it seems I get rid of the most of those dirty stuffs, which I separated here. Then I thrown those dirty things away. Get the hell out of here. Now, what I have here is all the nice starch compound from potatoes. Then I decided to measure out the starch from potatoes. And it's telling me that I've got only 13.3 grams of starch from 383.7 grams of potatoes. Now let's measure out this tiny amount of starch from potato peels. I transferred the potato peel starch on a watch dish and put the watch dish on the measurement scale. Here the scale is showing 4.8 grams. But it's actually the weight of the wash dish. Because the amount of starch I've got from potato peels is really low. Less than 0.1 grams. Even the scale can measure this. So I assumed the net weight of the peel starch is around 0 0.06 grams. From 47.7 grams of potato peels, I've got only 0 0.06 grams of starch. Like, seriously? Anyways, we have reached at the final part of this video. At first, I've measured out 60 ml of cold water into the conical flask. Then I added 5 ml of acetic acid or vinegar and around 7 ml of glycerin into that conical flask. Then I added few drops of yellow food color and shook the flask to mix all the ingredients perfectly. Here I've measured out 10 grams of starch that I've extracted from potato in the first part of this video. I've already filled one third of a dish with water and put that on the stove. Then I have turned on the stove on low temperature. Then I placed the conical flask in the dish and dropped all the measured potato starch into that flask. When the mixture became hot, I started to stir the mixture and then the mixture started to thicken up. I cooked the mixture about 25 minutes. Now here, all I have a gooey substance. Now the question comes, why the mixture has been turned into this jelly-like substance? Obviously, there is some amazing chemistry behind this. Suppose this is the flask which contains the solution I made. Let me remind you again that the solution is a mixture of water, acetic acid and glycerin. I used food color. That's why the solution turned into yellow. Then I added the potato starch in the mixture and heated all the ingredients together. When starch is heated with water, the starch granules swell and burst, causing them to break down and release the glucose molecules into the water. Potato starch is made up of two special types of glucose polymers, one amylose and two amylopectin. Amylose is a glucose polymer linked through alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkages, whereas amylopectin is a polysaccharide made up of many units of glucose, linked together by linear alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkages and alpha-1,6 glycosidic linkages. Then, 
Acetic acid molecules in the mixture help the branched amylopectin molecules to break into straight-chained amylose molecules. Each amylose molecule's hydroxyl group is linked with another amylose molecule's hydroxyl group by a weak hydrogen bond. As the solution kept heating, glycerin molecules break those weak hydrogen bonds to create new hydrogen bonds between its hydroxyl groups and each amylose molecule's hydroxyl groups. Besides, some of glycerin molecules also create hydrogen bonds between its hydroxyl groups and oxygen in amylose straight chained groups. Consequently, these molecules interact with the more glycerin and water molecules, increasing the randomness of the solution and the solution gets thickened up. This process is known as gelatinization of starch. Keep in your mind that Adding more glycerin will make the bioplastic softer and more flexible. Adding less will make it harder and stiffer, but more fragile. So, this jelly-like substance is the result of the process called gelatinization of starch. Let's dry this up by keeping it in a sunny place. After a week, we have got the final product and yes, this is the bioplastic which has been made from potatoes. Here you can see it's a little bit flexible and has a nice transparent texture. From 383.7 grams of potatoes, here I've got around 16 grams of bioplastic. Okay, okay, okay. It's still not the end of this video. Some may have questions in their mind about what bioplastic actually is and what are the uses of this. Bioplastics are plastics derived from renewable natural materials such as plants instead of petroleum. They are used for disposable items like packaging, containers, straws, bags and bottles as well as non-disposable items like carpet, piping, phone casings, 3D printing, and medical implants. So, that's all for today. See you guys soon with another exciting chemistry project. Till then, stay tuned with YoChemMate.